Another way to subtly control the energy of the room is by talking softly. Maybe not the advice you were expecting from a rapper, but it's another trick that I found really works. The person who put me on to it was the legendary actor Bruce Willis. Bruce and I first met on the set of a heist film, The Setup. One night during filming, the cast and crew went out to eat together. I was seated at the same table as Bruce, and throughout the night, people would come over to pay their respects. I noticed that every time someone would initiate a conversation with Bruce, they'd have to lean in close to catch what he was saying. Similarly, whenever the entire table was engaged in conversation, if someone asked Bruce his opinion, he'd answer in almost a whisper. The entire table would have to lean in towards him to hear. After dinner, Bruce invited me to join him in the hotel lobby for a cigar. As we smoked, I asked him about what I observed. Say, man, I said, how come every time someone asks you something at dinner, you answer it in damn near a whisper? You're not talking like that now. Bruce started to laugh. You noticed that, huh? He said. Very observant of you. That's something I picked up years ago. Whenever you're around a lot of people and everyone's trying to be heard, the secret is to speak as softly as possible. When someone speaks like that, our natural reaction is to lean into them as close as possible. We don't realize it, but when we do that, we're transferring all our power to them. Damn, I said. That never occurred to me before. I'm used to people trying to control the room by being as loud as possible. Try it, Bruce said. You see what I'm talking about. So I gave it a shot, and Bruce was absolutely on point. The more quietly I spoke, the more intently people listened. In testing the technique, I found that giving people less than they expected wasn't just effective with verbal communication, but with body language too. For example, I noticed that executives always respond to nonverbal cues when they're talking to a room. If they make a point, they expect something from you in return. It can be a laugh, a slight nod, a raised eyebrow, or even just a shift in your seat. Something that communicates to them, yes, important person, I'm receiving your information. Even if we're not conscious of it, we usually end up giving them that affirmation that they're looking for. I decided to do an experiment when I was doing a round of meetings with TV executives. For some reason, they seemed just a little bit cockier and more arrogant than other execs and really liked to control the room. I wanted to see if I could snatch that control out from under them without them even realizing it. Every time some big shot TV exec was pontificating about their plans, when they looked to me for that affirmation, I'd just sit there stone-faced. No nod, no laugh. I would not offer them anything. It would completely throw them off. They became very flustered. Once I had them off their game, it was much easier to assert my agenda and move the conversation in a direction that was more beneficial for me. I was hustling harder, but literally without moving a muscle. Try it yourself. If you're in a meeting and your boss looks to you for affirmation, don't give it to them. That doesn't mean stare at your phone or off in the space while they're talking. By all means, maintain eye contact and show that you're listening. Just don't offer them any nonverbal feedback beyond that. I promise that if you do that, the person that's speaking will become fixated on you. Subconsciously, they will be thinking, everyone else is giving me verification, but this person isn't giving me anything. What's going on? You could be the most junior person in the room, but after that meet, you're going to occupy some prime real estate in your boss's head. They're going to be thinking, that's a smart person. I need to pay more attention to them. You will have made a positive and lasting impression on your boss. Now it's up to you to capitalize on that advantage you've created for yourself. If you don't follow up that meeting with impressive ideas and a strong work ethic, the impression won't be worth much. But if you can use your boss's newfound interest to showcase the great work you've been doing, it's really going to propel your trajectory.